Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of x squared over the square root of x squared plus 1 dx. So pause the video if you want to try it on your own. I'll give you a little hint. You need to use trig sub. Uh, notice here, underneath the radical in the denominator, we have the expression x squared plus 1. So start off using trig sub. All right. So jumping in, the trig sub that you should have chosen is we're going to let x equal tangent theta. We use tangent anytime there's addition between the squared variable quantity and the constant. And then from here, I'll take the derivative of both sides. So dx is secant squared theta d theta. And that means I'm just going to replace dx with all of this. Good? Okay, so now let's rewrite our entire integral all in terms of theta. So instead of x squared in the numerator, I'll have tangent squared theta. The denominator becomes the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. And then this dx right here is secant squared theta d theta. Good. Now remember, we do trig sub. That way we can replace this expression that's usually underneath a radical. It doesn't have to be, though. Um, with the Pythagorean identity. So tangent squared theta plus 1, we know that that's secant squared theta. And then don't forget, that's sitting underneath a radical. So when I take the square root, technically it's the absolute value of secant theta. But remember, when we do trig sub, we restrict where theta can be, so we don't have to worry about keeping those absolute value bars. So now I'm just going to have secant theta in the denominator from taking the square root of secant squared theta. And then we still have over here secant squared theta d theta. Okay, so now you can just go ahead and cancel this secant theta with one of the secants up top. And then we're left with integral tan squared theta, secant theta, d theta. And then this is where you kind of got to play around with your different options. So usually I first think, could I do u sub, right? So you have two options. Either you would let u be secant theta or you would let u be tangent theta. So if u is secant theta, du would be secant theta, tan theta, d theta. Do I have that? No, because if this is u, I would need another secant theta for my du and I don't have that. Okay, so this guy's not going to work. And then maybe you're thinking, okay, u could be tan theta, but then du would be secant squared theta d theta. I don't have that either, right? If u is tan theta, nope, that's not working. And then you don't want to let u be tan squared theta. You have like a nasty chain rule to contend with from there. So I just wouldn't even mess with it. So what does that mean for us? And most of the time, you know, I'm at a point where I'll just do this in my head, but write it out if you need to. Well, that means when you're semi-stuck, you go, ooh, tan squared theta, let me replace that with the Pythagorean identity. Play around, maybe something good will unfurl. So tan squared theta I can replace with mm -hmm, secant squared theta minus 1, and then we still have this secant theta d theta. And then now let me go ahead and distribute secant theta throughout, okay? So then we'll have integral secant cubed theta minus secant theta d theta. Now, perhaps you've just memorized the antiderivative of secant cubed theta because you'll see it from time to time and it's a little tedious to derive. It's not the end of the world though. But just in case you haven't, I'll work through it with you. Minus, and then we have integral secant theta d theta. So I'm gonna split this guy into two parts depending on where you're at. If you've already memorized this, then good for you. That's the first one I'll do. And then this antiderivative of secant theta d theta. We should all know that. Okay, so let's work on integral number one, secant cubed theta d theta. So the way you figure out this antiderivative is first you're going to rewrite it as secant theta times secant squared theta d theta. And we're going to do integration by parts. So we let u be secant theta and dv is secant squared theta d theta, then that means du would be secant theta tan theta d theta, and v is just going to be tangent theta. 
okay? So this integral right here, I know it's gonna boomerang, that's how this whole thing proceeds, and I know that because I've done this one a bunch of times, okay? So just remember, if you're not gonna memorize what the antiderivative of secant cubed theta is, that you have to break it up and do integration by parts and have it boomerang. What do I mean by boomerang? I mean that the original indefinite integral comes back to us. So I'm gonna call it I. I stands for all of this, okay? That equals, by our by parts formula, u times v, so that would be secant theta tan theta minus the integral of v du, which is going to be secant theta tan squared theta d theta. How are we doing? Okay, to get the boomerang to come back to us, we're going to replace tan squared theta with secant squared theta minus 1 and distribute. So my integral, antiderivative of secant cubed theta, equals secant theta tan theta minus integral. I'm going to distribute now this secant theta to secant squared theta minus 1, and I'll have secant cubed theta minus secant theta d theta. Do you see how our integral came back to us? Our boomerang has returned. Oh, yes. I equals secant theta tan theta. Let me split it up so it's crystal clear. Minus integral secant cubed theta d theta plus integral secant theta d theta. Here it is. This is I. So you're solving for I just like you solve for a variable quantity in an equation. I'm going to move over or add I so it's on the other side. So now I have 2i equals secant theta tan theta plus integral secant theta d theta. And then divide by 2. So i is 1 half secant theta tan theta plus 1 half integral secant theta d theta. And then you can do this antiderivative now if you want to save it because look, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. So you could put it all together later if you want. Let's just knock it out here. So this is 1 half secant theta tan theta plus 1 half antiderivative of secant theta. Just memorize it. Natural log absolute value secant theta plus tan theta plus I'll put C1 because this is from our first integral. Remember I broke it up into two? Yeah. So the other one... Not very exciting. The other one is just integral, secant theta d theta. Well, we already know what that is. Ln, absolute value, secant theta plus tan theta. I'll say plus C2. Okay. And then when we put it all together for our final answer, look at how we broke it up. We have to do the result from integral 1 minus the result from integral 2. Okay, so all together, we have, this is result from integral 1 minus result from integral 2. 1 half secant theta tan theta plus 1 half ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta minus ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta, and I'm going to put plus C, where C is C1 minus C2. And keep track of your constants. If you have to move on to differential equations later, you're going to always be doing this. So it's a good habit to start now. Did you notice these are like terms here? So I can combine them into a negative 1 half ln secant theta plus tan theta. And actually, let's take that 1 half out while we're at it. So I have 1 half secant theta, tan theta, minus ln absolute value, secant theta, plus tan theta, plus c. Good? Okay, I combined like terms, took out a half. Don't get too excited. I'm so sorry we can't box it just yet. Remember, the original variable of the integral was x, and we had made that trig sub. We said let x equal tangent theta. So think of x as x over 1, and it's triangle time, my friends. Oh, yeah. 
So draw yourself a little right triangle. Here's theta. Tangent of that theta needs to be x over 1. So ratio of opposite side over adjacent. Then the hypotenuse is square root of x squared plus 1. Oh, we saw that in the original integral. No surprise. So then from here, we've got 1 half secant theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So that's going to be square root x squared plus 1 times tangent theta. Well, we have tan theta. It's just x. Or you could look at the triangle again if you're like, I drew this triangle. Let me use it to the max. Minus ln absolute value. Well, we know what secant theta is. We just found it. Square root x squared plus 1 plus tan theta is x plus c. Are we happy with that for a final answer? I'm not. When you have this one little loner, put it in front of the radical so that there's no confusion. You know, is it underneath there or not? Nobody leaves it like this, or at least you shouldn't. Put it in the front. And then here, square root of x squared plus 1 plus x, that's never negative. So I can just switch these to parentheses. We don't have to keep them absolute value. And I'm liking this one half in the front. So x square root x squared plus 1 minus ln parentheses square root x squared plus 1 plus x. Close it up, close it up, plus c. Now, technically, if you left it absolute value, it's not wrong. So it's up to you if it makes you nervous to switch to parentheses. Maybe don't, but a lot of the time you'll see it rewritten this way. Okay, that's the final answer. Did you get it? I hope you enjoyed this integral of the day. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you need to review any of the integration techniques that I used in this video, don't worry. I have full video lectures all linked in the description. And then if you need help with other topics from Calc 1, 2, 3, or even pre-calc, trig, stats, differential equations, linear algebra, I have video lectures on almost every single lesson covered in those courses. So just go to the playlist. Everything's there. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.